All right, welcome to the next installment in Gospel Open Data Science. I'm your host, Mark G. Bilby. I just wanted to follow up quickly from yesterday's presentation about um, the process of aligning uh, ProEL and Glaux data. Um, particularly wanted to show you how the patching process works and why it's necessary. Um, just want to show what some of the gaps are in the ProEL data when it comes to using it as a, as a full syntactical uh, tree banking of the canonical New Testament texts. So in this case, we're look, taking a close look at um, Luke 15, 23, and 24. Um, as I merged the data, I, uh, as I recalled in the last episode, I did uh, sort of little patches, substitutions of small crosses examples where I split them into two because that's the difference between the Glauc state and the ProEL data. But sometimes we run into these larger chunks where there's not alignment between the texts. So when we're in here, Luke 23, uh, 15, 23, and 24, what we see is there's a there's a whole sequence here, starting with Thusate and going to the elliptical that isn't present in, uh, this is the Glauc data, but it's not present in the ProEL data. And you can see that by just looking here at the top and they began to rejoice and they began to rejoice. So we see that that alignment. So this chunk is missing. We know it's missing. So so why is it missing? Uh, you know that 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 question might come up. So if we take a look at the ProEL XML, we actually find that the string is all there. So all of these tokens here correspond to that missing string. So it is present. Um, it's part of sentence four eight four nine eight in ProEL. Uh, the sentences aren't always sequential. But this is there. But for some reason, when they did this tripartite division of their Conlu files, um, it just didn't get included. So we could search in the training data. This is the training data for Luke 15. Nothing comes up. We can search in the test data for Luke 15. Nothing comes up. Nothing from Luke 15 is in that part. And then the... Um, the dev data though does have Luke 15, but when we look closely at it, it's actually missing that whole chunk of text. So we have uh, 23 and you'll see here, it just kind of skips really quick from 1522 down to 1524. I won't save any of those, which I was just trying to make it a little larger. Anyway, so uh, chunk, chunk of data is missing. Um, this corresponds to this, the sentences right here. Um, so what we need to do is patch it. So how how do we do that patching uh, for that missing spot in the data? So I'll go ahead and close these out. Here you can see in in the this is the combined data. You can also see that it's missing. So how how do I patch this? Well, at first I just kind of note what the specific start and stop points of the patch are, and then the specific start and stop verses. I just record those in a file really quick, and then uh, here's a script that I have that will take the most recent CSV file that combines the ProEO and the Glaux data, because uh, I just want to use the, the best cleanest data that we have. And then it allows me to enter in the specific start and stop points of a text segment that I want to pull. So I want to pull uh, 1523 through 1524. Uh, we're working on Luke right now. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that just in case that throws any problems and it writes it out to a file called concatenated forms so i think i actually already have that oh no i don't have it open right now uh, i don't want to be in the axe of trees with that i want to be here okay so we see um concatenated forms here come up at the top we can open that up and here's the text. So it just it just went and quickly pulled that. So I don't have to copy it from another software program, you know, which might not be consistent. It might use a different edition of the New Testament that might not align with Glaux or ProEL. So I just want to pull it directly from the text itself. I want to copy it. And then I want to make sure that the start and the stop points align. So we have Fusate here at the beginning, sacrifice. So we're gonna make that the starting point. And then the ending point is Hyurete here. We don't need the elliptical because that isn't part of the UD pipe um, processing anyway. It wouldn't really recognize that as a token. And I'm gonna go ahead and just take out the punctuation 
because the UD pipe syntactical parser uh, will segment the sentence anyway. Um, so it doesn't really need that. So here's our string. And now I can get rid of this. So I've basically prepped the patch. Now here's the specific string that will be patched to bring the two texts into alignment. Um, and so now I will go to my next script, which calls on the UD pipe model, the, the Proio one specifically, um, which is here, which you can download. Uh, all this stuff, by the way, is uh, available, you know, like for free on the web. You can go check out the ProEL Tree Bank project. You can go to the Universal Dependencies website and download the model. You can set up the UD pipe package in R or Python and run this for yourself. So what I'm going to do here to uh, create the patch is to copy and paste in the text. And then I'm just going to annotate it a little bit. Um, Actually, what would be helpful here is to split this into two patches. So let me dodgeball reference. Uh, so 23, some of this, Thusateca uh, Fagantes, Hjorfraino, Hjorfraino, and then the comma, that's all verse 23. So I actually want that to be, I want to do this in two patches because I'm going to annotate while I patch. So um, part of the patch is 23, part of the patch is 24. I'm going to go ahead and split the patch because what I do here is use the script. Um, so here we go. So this will be just a small patch at the end of uh, 1523. There we go. And so this will insert uh, a reference, which we find in the ProEL data anyway. Uh, if we look in, it's called the mis miscellaneous field uh, in the ProEL data. If we zoom in on that, you can see these references. It's kind of the last one here at the end. So I want to make it match uh, that format. And then, you know, it's just a, re a reference to the verse. So it makes it easier to find this. And then I put the little sub reference at the end just to, to um, inform, you know, be transparent that this is a substitution made to the ProEL Conlu data um, that I received. So just, you know, a little annotation uh, as a sort of a courtesy. So then I run I run the UD pipe model, it pulls the model, it, it live annotates the um, this little segment. And then I go to, I may have already have it open, UD pipe output. Here we go. So I'll reload this. This was from a previous one because there was a chunk of Luke 2 that was missing, 215, that was missing from the ProEL data. So here it, it actually splits it into two sentences. That's interesting. Um, I don't know if that exactly corresponds to the XML. I might want to go take a, a quicker look at that um, just to make sure. But what I can do essentially here is take this uh, data. I might just keep it in a two sentence format because it, it won't really matter. And then I want to uh, find the start point for the, for the patch. Let's see, let me go over to this data. So Situtan uh, is where the patch needs to start. There we go, Situtan, okay. So the patch needs to go right here. And um, I do want to, I'm going to shrink this down a little bit so that I can just edit it a little more cleanly. So um, some of these fields I don't add in advance. Um, so I'll just go ahead and copy those in. So, and then the sentence ID, I don't really want to impose a sentence ID, I suppose, but, uh, you know, because it could conflict with other ones. It's not really, um, but I, I guess I could go ahead and make one up just temporarily as it's not the biggest deal in the world. Um, the sentence data doesn't get put into that final XML in any case. So we have the text, we have the parsing, we have the reference here, that all looks good. And then we need to make one more patch now. So I will go to the patches, I will go to Luke 15. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay. This is a little bit of an issue because this this is a compound sentence. 
So that actually makes it a little bit more of a challenge. So actually, I'm going to change my mind here on the patch. I'm going to patch this all together. Um, and I think it will spit out two sentences using UD pipe. So let's do that. Let's just patch it in one go. And then I'm not, most of them are going to be in Luke uh, 1524. Or I could just do, yeah, just do Freinomen. And then the rest. Okay. There, that's probably good. Let's go ahead and do that. Have it annotate. And then we'll go up and see what the output is. And yeah, it did. It, it made you Freinomen as the start. And the, this is a subordinating conjunction. And then we have the rest of the statement. So we needed to keep those together, actually. I couldn't, I didn't want to split the patch. Uh, even though I want to split it for verse reasons, uh, this right here is 23. But it is a, a unified sentence. This shows you some of the arbitrariness of the verse divisions. It's, they're all not always meaningful syntactical divisions. So I'm going to take that. I'm going to go to the uh, file that I edit. Actually, let me do one more. Let me do the patch one more time. Just to make sure that we're getting the syntactical divisions correct. Like, I, I just don't want to. Okay, let's open that up. Oh, changes. Okay, Thusate is its own place, but then Kai and Faganthes go together. Okay, that makes sense. That would be the conjunction introduces a new syntactical unit, a new sentence, and then those two are part of the second sentence. So now I'm going to take that. Yeah, there we go. That makes sense. And yeah, that is correct. Thusate is its own sentence. Uh, we'll get rid of this second sentence ID. We are in Luke 15. That's a sub. Okay. I think everything is accurate now. So I'm going to go ahead and save this. And then I will rerun my pipe. Wait, what was that? I accidentally deleted that. I don't want to do that. Okay. So um, you saw me sort of produce the patch. You saw me um, work through the patch and sort of uh, thoughtfully annotate it. Sometimes the patch is just one verse, so it's really easy to annotate. But if it's split among verses, that's sort of a special case. And now I'm going to rerun the entire process. And we can make that smaller. We got stage four here, so we're opening this up. And if we go down to 1523, we should see if it all worked correctly. We should see a fully seamless uh, sequence at that point. That was the point where the, yep, and now we got full alignment here between these two. So that was 14 or 15 words, two verses, two syntactical units, two sentences, but that will make the patch go much more smoothly. And then, you know, it could be that I'm done now with Luke if that was the last patch. And scroll down here. Yeah, it looks like it's in alignment now. Oh, no, we got one more out of alignment. So we got some missing chunk, maybe in like chapters 19 to 21. So I'll have to go take a look at that. I just thought uh, it'd be interesting uh, for people to see what the patching process is like. And, you know, um, the ProEL data is really, really excellent, well curated data. Um, it's got a very low error rate. Um, but there are these spots, at least in the Conlute transformed version of, of the data. And that's just seemed like the easier format to work with um, because uh, Conlu is already basically kind of like crosswalked over to the universal dependencies. ProEL is kind of in its own standard. Some of it is similar to universal dependency, some of the tagging, but some of it is um, is sort of esoteric. And uh, so I want to use the data that's been crosswalked over to the universal dependencies format because that's going to be more um, easily aligned with the Glaucs data um, and just meaningful, more meaningful across applications. So 
anyway, that's a, just a, a quick update. Uh, hope hope you enjoyed that for our, our techie geeks out there, knowing how this data is uh, is curated. And um, this, this is a big part of, of quality data analysis. You need quality data in order to do quality analysis, quality visualizations, and these sorts of things. So this is the kind of meticulous work that goes on behind the scenes. All right. Thanks. Have a good day.